Hello, marvelous, wonderful people. Welcome to my channel, Too Cute for Cancer. My name is Jody, and I am living with stage four metastatic triple negative breast cancer. If you are not following my journey, and I would love it if you would just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Recently, I have had a ton of questions, um, a lot of concern from well-meaning people who I think, who think I made a big mistake by not continuing with chemotherapy. I've even had people say I was giving up. So today, I want to address these well-meaning concerns head on. I did not come to my decision to stop chemotherapy easily or overnight. My decision was not made out of fear or emotion at all. <laughs> I am a very detailed person. Some might say I'm a geek. I love doing research and seeing things from all different sides of a situation. I am not one to Google a topic and take the first three opinions or findings. Nope. I want to hear things from the horse's mouth. Which, by the way, is kind of funny because I've never heard a horse talk. Have you? Hmm. When I'm presented with anything, I don't trust or accept the first option. Nope. <laughs> I have to know all sides and evidence before I draw a conclusion. With all of this said, when my cancer spread to my bones and the doctors were saying, more chemo, more radiation, I started digging. I read multiple studies and medical journals. Yes, the actual medical journal. <laughs> Remember, I warned you, I'm a geek. <laughs> In addition to this, I interviewed multiple oncologists who outside, two outside of my uh, network of doctors asked to get an, a clear view of my options. Some would say, why? Why, Jody? All those doctors will just tell you the same thing. Absolutely not so. I also researched how my doctors were trained, where they were trained, what their backgrounds were. For example, my awesome primary oncologist is a young, younger, newer doctor and prior to living here in the United States, she lived and worked in Japan. Her minor in college was nutrition. She also published an article in the American Cancer Journal about the correlation of food and the metabolism of cancer cells. My second opinion was an older, more seasoned doctor from City of Hope, one of the top cancer centers in America. His background, while amazing, knew nothing about nutrition and how it affects chronic illness. He, like most physicians, was only required to take 13 units in basic nutrition. Yep, that's true. So when I Google and I see a doctor recommends or doesn't recommend whatever, something, I don't trust their opinion right off because who knows what their background, what their experience is in other than the traditional. One last stop for me when researching is talking to a doctor in our own immediate family. Bouncing ideas and questions off of someone who was not only a surgeon here in the States, but also a surgeon in Peru for many years. And it, it's, it's invaluable in all of this, in my, invaluable in all of my decision making. Eh, tongue tied much, Jody. One thing to remember is doctors are human beings with extensive knowledge in medicine. Along with the knowledge is their own personal backgrounds and personalities. This is why we can get different responses to our questions. So what I've done in all of my cancer related decision making is gather opinions and facts from a variety of sources. Then I mix in prayer and I make my decision. When my tumors started spreading to my bones, I went through this exact same process of interviews and I decided in favor of chemotherapy and a clinical trial, which nearly killed me. <laughs> when I decided to let my body restore itself with pure anti-inflammatory eating and to regroup and see what my next step would be, we took a watch and see approach, which proved to be so valuable in my case. My cancer stopped growing. My mets did not disappear, but they, but they were stable. 
And the goal wasn't to make them disappear, it was just to buy me more time. So we took a watch and see um, approach. Anyway, in the, we discovered that my cancer was st stable and they remained stable for five years. That's amazing, right? So recently my cancer has started spreading to my sternum and my ribs. So again, I did the exact same thing. I went back through my, um, through my process again. Uh, let's talk a little bit about chemotherapy at this stage in the game. Chemo is most effective the first time around to shrink or clear tumors. For late stage cancer, chemo changes its role from a cure to what is called palliative care. Palliative care is to manage the symptoms of the cancer and to possibly reduce tumor sizes or slow the growth and buy the patient more time. The problem with palliative care is oftentimes it's a 50-50 chance of it doing any good at, at all. One of, the one of my oncologists said that palliative chemo is a Hail Mary, his exact words. One thing some doctors don't tell you is that chemotherapy does a lot of damage to the rest of your body. For example, your heart, your kidneys. Um, so there has to be a balance when choosing what, when, and how much chemo you do. In my case, my cancer has been slow moving, uh, which is out of character for triple negative breast cancer and it's not in my organs at this time. So my decision to turn down palliative chemotherapy is based on first, my own body and the cancer. Second uh, reason for declining palliative chemotherapy is studies in holistic medicine. There are so many studies and case studies showing success in alternative care for end of life patients. People are living with their tumors for longer periods of time more time than they would have with chemo. Another point is they are living, feeling great, <laughs> their final years and months of life instead of drugged and exhausted. In addition, I've actually met patients that go into remission while building their immune system up and creating an inhospitable environment for their cancer cells to remain. One more thing to note when considering chemotherapy and alternative cares. Most will say there are no studies proving holistic medicine works and chemo is tried and true. Well, there is some truth in this statement. <laughs> However, there's another side to why this, this is. Holistic cures often include food and nutrition based. Finding, funding to study these cures are very low. The FDA is slow in approving anything that can't be studied in a lab or a controlled study group. This does not mean that these holistic means do not work. There are numerous studies that show great success. Doctors are not allowed to support these or recommend these to their patients. All of my doctors had said that, so it's not just me thinking that up. There is so much money wrapped up in clinical trials, traditional medicine, it may take some time before we see more natural options for our cure. I have met and known cancer patients who have never had chemo and are thriving. I've also met tons of people who have died doing chemo or holistic medicine. My personal belief is that there is not one way to treat illness most will follow a traditional cure because we have been raised to respect the training and the dedication of doctors and have never questioned if there is another way. Statistics show that 90% of people with a terminal illness never even seek a second opinion. Hmm. The 10% that do seek a second opinion seek with within their own network, which means they will most likely hear the exact same opinion. Not always, of course, but remember, different doctors, different backgrounds, different opinions. So when my cancer started to move again, I once again am choosing what was, has worked for me in the past five years. Now this does not mean I'm declining all traditional treatments, and it doesn't mean I will never say yes to more chemotherapy. All this means is for right now, based on my research, I am saying 
no to, to chemotherapy. I will take each scan one at a time and go from there. I hope this answers and relieves some of your concerns. Now, if you are not already a member of our community and would like to join my journey, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And don't forget, next Friday is Friendly Friday. Woohoo! <laughs> and I'll see you again then, okay? You guys have a wonderful week. Get over that hump and then keep on going, all right? This is Too Cute for Cancer, signing off, and I will see you Friday.